Hey everyone, just coming to you with this public service announcement. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. So let me explain. First and foremost, it's free to do so. You don't got to come out of your pocket. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole bunch of other platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's why I got on it. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right. Peace. Peace, peace. We are back once again with Masterminds with Brother Shem L. I'm your host, Brother Shem L, and I'm really excited to be back and get back to a new episode. And before I will get into our topic for today, I just want to um, just say Uh, Thank you to everyone. I always do this. Definitely thank you um, to everyone who has been supporting me, Um, particularly this past week. I've been getting a lot of uh, support, Um, a lot of great feedback from the um, previous episode, which is uh, when God and the devil have a talk, how to guard your mind. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from that. Um, People are really enjoying that content. Um, So thank you um, for your support. Thank you for your feedback, your positive feedback. Also, I've been getting um, numerous requests and um, for, for my books, inquiries on my books, um, purchases. Um, They, they've been coming in. Uh, like I said the, the the funds been coming in from many different ways. The blessings been coming down. So thank you all. I want to give a special th- I want to give a special shout out, um, a special honors and a special shout out to uh, a brother uh, who reached out to me yesterday. Uh, his name is Ryan Allen Bay. Um, honors to you, brother. Um, this brother here was very very persistent and I give him honest for that because um, not only did he reach out to me uh, via my two emails that I put up on the podcast but he also reached out to me on YouTube on my YouTube channel which I don't really promote as much as I used to it's still active you can go to uh, my YouTube channel Shemel just type up Shemel um, as a matter of fact um, some of my most recent podcast episodes have been um, posted, uploaded on the YouTube um, through Spreaker Um, but he reached out to me there and was like, peace brother you know, I'm trying to get your books how can I get your books (laughs) so and um, so I reached back to him you know, had to make sure I, make sure the brother was taken care of communicated back with him um he ended up acquiring uh, purchasing three of my books so honest to you brother um if you're listening just let you know that is on your way it is in route if you're listening at the time of this recording you should receive that uh within some days and i also added uh, a little extra gift as a thank you and a sign of token of my appreciation uh, for your support and your due diligence and uh, not thank you for not only your support and thank you for um, you know the positive feedback and appreciating what I do but also thank you for being who you are because anyone who is um, that diligent and that persistent in getting books in this day and time is someone who is serious about seeking knowledge And I have a high respect for anyone who is serious um, about seeking knowledge from 
you know, and it doesn't have to be about getting it from me, you know, just period, just being able to um, seek and acquire knowledge, wisdom and understanding, understanding, overstanding, um, you know, to help on their journey. You know, I have um, high, high regard for. So honest to you, brother. And with that, I can get into today's topic. The title of this episode is simply the soul of man. And for those who have um, who have their um, Circle 7, uh, Holy Quran and More Science Temple of America, you should know where I'm going to be reading from. That's right, chapter 38, The Soul of Man. And um, before I get into that, um, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, let me reiterate, um, as I have from time to time, for those of you who are interested in getting my books, um, you can go to my website, sheml.com. That's S H E M hyphen E L dot com. Um, you can go to the products tab. Um, if you're on the mobile phone, you know, if you don't want to go up to the, the upper drop down menu, you can actually hit the, uh, I believe the button that says, what is the higher self? And that will take you to the page for the products and you will see my books and other products as well. Um, for those of you are interested and, um, I just want to just make this point. If, if you are liking this information that I'm putting out on my podcast, you will definitely, um, not be disappointed. (laughs) <laughs> you will definitely enjoy my books. And I can say that with a surety, um, no ego involved. Um, but I just put it like this. When you have uh, a teacher such as a Dr. Aleem L. Bay tells you that your information is on point and goes out of his way to buy all of your books, then that's just a confirmation that something is being done right. And, you know, I'm humbled by that. So... For those of you, again, if you're interested in getting my books, um, if you like the podcast, want to support, go to my website, sheml.com. That's S-H-E-M hyphen E-L dot com. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go into the soul of man. I'm going to actually touch on the break it down kind of in two parts. Uh, I'll be reading this. This is a lengthy, um, not not that lengthy, but it's relatively more lengthy than the um, passages I read. I'm going to attempt to read the whole chapter and then do a breakdown in terms of the esoteric aspects of it, um, as well as some of that pertaining to the um, the demonstration pertaining to energy, the life force um, within our bodies on the health side. So, uh, I try to put pack all of this in before I read this. I want to give some background. Some of you may be familiar with the dialogue <clears throat> about some of the latter chapters in the circle seven. Um, this is usually you'll find me reading more of the earlier chapters, chapter one, chapter five, you know, chapter seven, etc. But in the latter chapters, you know, there's a discussion within the Morse movement about these chapters being taken from a book called um what's the name? Uh, Unto the I Grant, which is a Rosicrucian book. Um which was revised, supposedly revised by a Sri uh, Ramatherio. Okay. Um, however, and as I mentioned before, Noble Drali did not ever claim to be the writer or the uh, originator of this information. He said that he took it, he prepared it, basically. It was divinely prepared. And also on page three, uh, he spoke about the fact that these lessons 
had not been known because the Muslims of India, Egypt, and Palestine had these secrets and kept them back from the outside world. And when the time appointed by Allah, they loosened the keys and freed these secrets. And for the first time in ages, have these secrets been delivered in the hands of the Muslims of America. So he basically was saying that he got these lessons from the East, namely India, Egypt, and Palestine. So with that said, you know, definitely want to um, make that known. So let me also uh, elaborate that you will actually find out when you go further into this and research it, you find it comes from come from a actual um, book entitled The Economy of Human Life. Okay? The title of it is called The Economy of Human Life Complete in Two Parts Translated from an Indian Manuscript Written by an Ancient Brahmin. Okay? And it was translated by a Robert um, Dodsley in the 1700s. So again, this is confirmation that this came from, you know, the the lessons that were taught in India. And I just want to make that, you know, perfectly clear to you all on that. And the actual title in that book is called The Soul of Man, Its Origin and Affections. Okay? The Blessings. Okay? So, um... Yeah, the, the soul of man is origin and affection. So just keeping that in mind, um, I'm going to put that in context as I read this. So it starts off saying, The blessing, O man, of thy external part is health, vigor, and proportion. The greatest of these is health. What is health? Oh, I'm sorry. What health is to the body, even that is honesty to the soul. Now, we're going to revisit that first right there. That section right there. What health is to the body, even that is honesty to the soul. Next verse. That thou has a soul is of all knowledge, the most certain of all truths, the most plain unto thee. Be meek, be grateful for it. Seek not to know it perfectly. It is inscrutable. Thinking, understanding, reasoning, willing, call not these the soul. They are its actions, but they are not its essence. Raise it not too high that thou be not despised. Okay. Be not thou like unto those who fall by climbing, neither debase it to the sense of brutes, nor he or be or nor be thou like the horse and the mule in whom there is no understanding. Okay, so that's key to keep in mind. Okay. Search it by its faculties. Know it by its virtues. They are more in number than the hairs of thy head. The stars of heaven are not to be counted with them. Think not with Arabia that one soul is parted among all men. Neither believe thou with the sons of Egypt that every man have many. Know that as thy heart so also thy soul 
is one. So it's making the, the statement there, you know, don't think like the Arabians that there's one soul that is shared amongst by many individuals and neither believe like the ancient Egyptians that one soul one um, one man can have many souls okay each one has their their own soul appointed to them and again this ties back to chapter 1 of the circle 7 where it says that created fate gave to man to spirit man a soul that he might function on the plane of soul okay so we got to keep that in mind so now it goes on to say do not the sun harden the clay do it not also soften the wax as it is one sun that worketh both even so it is one soul willeth contraries so that's talking that one soul that you have will of contraries those that is dealing with you know the opposites polarity so your one soul can manifest two ends of the spectrum of polarity right that deals back with the um, principle of polarity as it mentioned in the Kabbalion and then it goes on and says as the moon retaineth her nature though darkness spread itself before her face as a curtain so the soul remaineth perfect even in the bosom of a fool because remember the soul is not the same as the body though man himself is not the body nor the soul he is a spirit and a part of the omnipotent goes on to say she is immortal she is unchangeable she is alike in all health calleth her forth to show her loveliness and application anointeth her with the oil of wisdom so here soul is identified as she that's the divine feminine taking it back also in relationship to the question in the Morris questionnaire what is the highest self the higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of life and breathes justice, mercy, love, and right. The higher self is the mother of virtues. Okay? So that's your divine feminine aspect as well. Keep in mind, and I'll be going into that a little more, that when you're dealing with the soul, you're dealing with what is known as the emotional body. And with this emotional body, naturally, the woman is more in tune with that than most men. Okay, they naturally soul is where you get your is your source of compassion, caring from. Okay, and the woman is more in tune with that being the mother, the nurturer. So in verse 10, it goes on and says, Although she shall live after thee, think not she was born before thee. She was created with thy flesh and formed with thy brain. Again, talking about the soul. Justice could not give her to thee exalted by virtues nor mercy deliver her to thee deformed by vices. These must be thine, and thou must answer for them. Uh, I'm going to stop there real quick. There's an interesting um, 
there's a there's a new animation that just came out recently called Soul on Disney. You can watch it if you have Disney Channel. You can watch it, um, and I believe Jamie Foxx is the main character in this. And I actually watched this twice uh, with my wife, and it's interesting how they go into this whole aspect of personality being implanted into the soul because when the soul is first there right you know, at least they're calling it souls they have no personality they go into a school <laughs> so to speak into a building and they get their personality and they get this little stamp and say well I'm you know you know, I'm a caring, compassionate person, or I'm a narcissist, or I'm this, that, and the third. And then the last thing they need to have is a spark. And until they get the spark, they cannot incarnate into a body. Okay. And that kind of ties in. Uh, many metaphysicians will teach you about the when the sperm travels up. And it gets a spark from the top of your dome relating to the crown chakra. And it gets that spark. And then it's from that when it fertilizes the egg that you now have a, you know, a human being. Okay. I just thought that was very interesting that they they say they call it the spark. And in the movie... Maybe I'm giving too much up if y'all didn't um, watch it. But I put it like this: there's a um, there's a misunderstanding that the spark is a passion, and it's not. Okay, so I'll, I'll just leave it like that, you know, because we just all oh, kindle that spark, and it, you know, but it breaks it down that the spark is not your passion or your desire, whatever you have. So that that's interesting. So I'll just put that in that context. It's a good movie to watch if you want to be entertained. Um, so on verse 12, it says, Suppose not death can shield thee from examination. Think not corruption can hide thee from inquiry. He who formed thee of thou knoweth not what can he not raise thee from thou knowest not what again so in other words it's saying that just because you die right just because you die doesn't mean that you will not have to face you know that self examination of who you are Okay. Neither can corruption hide you from inquiry, from inquiring about yourself. So he, of course, the creator, the universal creator in this context, who formed thee of thou knowest not what. Okay. So he who formed you of of what you of what you do not know he who formed you of what you do not know can he not raise you from what you don't know again so if the universal creator have formed you from that which you don't even have a knowledge of a consciousness of a real awareness of a true understanding of can the same creator not does it make sense that he he would be able to raise you from that. That kind of ties back into the um, the Quran of Mecca, um, the great Quran of Muhammad, where it speaks about basically the conversation where it says, uh, where he tells the angels to prostrate before Adam as a Khalifa. Uh, we talked about this in previous um 
in a previous episode and they questioned that will you create a a being that will cause blood and shed blood and mischief on the planet on earth and he says I know what you know not okay so there there is a um, there's a realm of existence there are uh, there is things or think or, some, or that which you cannot even call the thing but for lack of a better word because we're confined in this body we use the term things there is that which you don't even can't even describe can't even imagine that is part and partial of your very existence okay and at some point in time you have to if if you if you wish to raise yourself up you have to be open to view those things okay so it goes on in 13 perceive it not the cock the hour of midnight exalted he not his voice to tell thee it is morning so that cock that crows right you know doesn't it tell you gives that sound to let you know that it's morning know if not the dog the footsteps of his master flee if not the wounded goat unto the herb that healed him yet when these die their spirit returned to dust thine alone survived so it says all these creatures the rooster the cock that crows right the dog that can tell you know that is a that is aware of his um master right you know when they die they don't ascend to the higher realms however you do so that's things that you have to keep in mind of when you're dealing with the soul and we're going to go more into this chapter later on so in verse 14 it says envy not to these senses because quicker than dying own learn that the advantage lieth not in possessing good things but in the knowing to use them so that's very straightforward so many people in life want to possess you know a lot of good things they want wealth health they want um, prestige they want a, a, a great relationship a great love life or what have you you know that house that car you know that bank account but the advantage we're to learn the advantage that learn that the advantage lies not in having them but in knowing how to use them because you can have these things and if you don't use it as they say you don't use it you lose it it's the same concept here there's many people who have risen to fame and fortune and have lost it you know and people who have had great relationships and then they lose it because they didn't know how to apply themselves in those situations to get the best results and maintain it, the maintenance of it. They didn't know how to maintain it, like a car. If you don't know how to maintain a car, it will have a short life span. So that's key. 15. Has not, oh, I'm sorry, has thou the ear of the stag or were thine eyes as strong and perceiving as the eagles? Didst thou equal the hound in smell? Or could the ape resign to thee this taste? Or could the tortoise her feeling 
So again, I'll, I'll repeat that part. Has thou the ear of the stag, or were thine eyes as strong and piercing as the eagles? Didst thou equal the hound in smell, or could the ape resign to thee his taste, or could the tortoise her feeling? Yet without reason, what would they avail thee? Perish not all these like their kindred. So even though these, again, we're going back to the animals, comparing you and differentiating you from the animal kingdom, okay? All these animals have very um, extraordinary compared to us. It's natural for them, but in us, it's, it's um, extremely powerful senses. They have very, um, very um, extraordinary or amazing capabilities, if you will. I'm going to use that word, amazing capabilities. The eyesight of the eagle, the, the hearing of a stag, right? The sense of the, again, it's going back to the senses. A hound can smell greater than you can, right? Um, and all these other animals. But they do not have the reason that a human being does which made you superior to them in that context. Again, back to chapter one, where it says that man is the Lord of all the plane of manifest, a protoplast of mineral, a plant of beast, but he gave up his birthright just to gratify his lower self. So what that, which makes you the Lord of the plane of manifest at this point, because you gave up your birthright to gratify your lower self the animal kingdom can actually take over you and that's what you see now when you see um, there was that old show that uh, used to come out when animals attack animals will attack you you're not in tune with your own true nature they are in tune with their nature so they can they can actually sense that from you is that deep so going on verse 16 have any one of them the gift the gift of speech can any say unto thee therefore did i do the lips of the wise or as the doors of a cabinet no sooner are they open but treasures are poured out before thee Okay, so the gift of speech, they may now animals communicate, they do communicate, and you can actually develop yourself to a level where you can communicate with the animals and with plants. Okay, but the gift of speech is dealing with in tied with the reason, is talking in the context of articulating ideas. They cannot articulate an idea. They can operate in according to their nature and they can communicate with each other on things that maybe must be done in accordance with their nature. Like, you know, birds may communicate with each other on where to travel. You know, if they travel south, you know, they migrate certain places and get food and things of that nature but they can't articulate ideas and come up with creativity of ideas. That's what's distinguished you from the animal kingdom. And then it goes on in verse 18. It says, like unto trees of gold arranged in beds of silver are wise sentences uttered in due season. Okay. The wise sentences, that's the articulation, the wisdom, the knowledge, the intellect. 19. Canst thou think too greatly of thy soul? Or can too much be said in its praise? It is the image of him who gave it. Right? Remember, that ties back to the Bible. Uh, one, the two parts um, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, where it says, and God said, let us make 
man in our image and after our likeness and then forwarding into chapter 2 verse 7 of Genesis where it says and the Lord um, the Lord God formed man from the dust in the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul okay so that's where you get that that awareness of it that the very as it says even in chapter 3 that in verse 6 where it says the higher self is human spirit clothed with soul made in the form of Allah and let's just talk before we continue on with this chapter the significance we always we talked about before in a previous episode about what it means to be formed or made in the form of Allah right and that's very key right there uh understanding that understanding the the difference between spirit and soul and um just going into page 12 of my book what is the higher self the question is asked um what is a soul right and um so First off, going back into soul, you know, in chapter one of the circle seven, it states that man cannot die. The spirit man is one with Allah. And while Allah lives, man cannot die. When man has conquered every foe upon the plane of soul, the seed will have full opened out. Will have unfolded in the holy breath, the garb of soul will then have served its purpose well and man will need it never more and it will pass and be no more and man will then attain unto the blessedness of perfectness and be at one with Allah. So it's important to note that at the end of that passage it mentions the holy breath. As mentioned, we've mentioned numerous times the English word spirit comes from the Latin word spiritus which means breath. You can see this in the words like respiration, inspire, perspire, right? Which I talk about um, in my book, Who is Elohim? And this is confirmed in the Holy Quran and More Science Temple of America, the Circle 7, chapter 8, verse 9, which states, And Jesus said, The holy breath cannot be seen with mortal eyes, nor can men see the spirit of the Holy One. Now, since the higher self is human spirit clothed with soul, as we just mentioned, we're dealing with that animated substance, that is the breath, which is covered by something called soul. And this is very important because this statement clearly shows that the spirit is entirely distinct from the soul, although many people think they are one and the same. The distinction between spirit and soul is clear in the Semitic languages with the Arabic nas for spirit or ruh for soul and in Hebrew neshama or nefesh for spirit and ruach for soul. So when you ask the question what is soul it is important to define exactly what a soul is. Soul can be classified as one's emotional body as I mentioned before. Right? And emotion is usually connected with mood, temperament, personality, disposition, and motivation. To put it simply, emotion is energy in motion. Okay? Or uh, they have that E equals MC squared thing. So it is through the soul that one has compassion for all other life. Right? And even in the in the Quran, right, um, of Mecca, the statement it says, and remember her who guarded her chastity, we breathed into her of our soul, and we made her and her son a sign for all peoples. 
Okay. And it goes in there's many chapters that deal with the soul in the other scriptures. But getting back to the circle seven in chapter 38, which is the soul of man, I'm going to go further in. In verse 20, it says, remember thou its dignity forever. Forget not how great a talent is committed to thy charge. Okay, so you're not to forget what is what you are responsible for with the soul. Whatsoever, verse 21, whatsoever may do good may also do harm. That goes back to the contraries, right? That's spoken that we spoke about with the soul. Okay, that the soul can also will contraries the opposites okay so whatsoever may do good may also do harm beware that thou direct its course to virtue in virtue polar opposite would be vice so you should direct the course of your soul to being virtuous to being of the higher self as opposed to doing vice which is the lower self gratifying the lower self and being carnal you know to your um, desires you know whether it's greed lust or what have you verse 22 think not that thou canst lose her in a crowd suppose not that thou canst bury her in thy closet action is her delight And she will not be withheld from it. This is talking about the soul again, the she, as a she, divine feminine. You can't lose your soul in a crowd. You can't be amongst a lot of people, right? And not hide the true essence of you. You know, eventually that soul will it it will manifest itself. Okay? You have to be true to your spiritual nature. Verse 23. Her motion is perpetual. Energy and motion. Her motion is perpetual. Her attempts are universal. Her agility is not to be suppressed. It is at the uttermost part of the earth. Or I should say, let me get corrected. Is it at the uttermost part of the earth? She will have it. Is it beyond the regions of the stars? Yet will her eye discover it. Inquiry is her delight as one who has transversed as one who transverses the burning sands in search of water so is the soul that thirsts after knowledge so let me repeat that and say it all the way through correctly her motion is perpetual her attempts are universal her agility is not to be suppressed is it at the uttermost part of the earth she will have it Is it beyond the regions of the stars? Yet will her eye discover it. Inquiry is her delight. As one who transverses the burning sands in search of water, so is the soul that thirsted after knowledge. This is where you get your term soul searching. Right? So this knowledge that we're speaking of, that the soul is going, is, is the knowledge within dealing with the true nature the spiritual nature of man okay so your soul is always yearning for something more if you if you have a soul and not everybody has a soul that's a whole nother conversation but if you have a soul that part of you that is your soul will thirst after this knowledge in some some form of fashion even if it takes you to a church where they stop and and Stopping their feet and clapping their hands. There are those who are just there because they're looking for something spiritual. And that's all they know where they can get anything remotely spiritual. So we shouldn't knock our brothers and sisters who may be into that, you know, because that's where they are at this point. But the soul thirsteth after knowledge. Once you provide that knowledge for the soul, that soul food, that true soul food, They'll 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 adhere to it. Verse twenty four. Guard her 
for she is rash. Restrain her for she is irregular. Correct her for she is outrageous. More supple is she than water. More flexible than wax. More yielding than air. Is there art that can bind her? So the soul is is fluid. Right? It's very fluid, especially when you're dealing with emotions. Emotions are very fluid. They fluctuate, can fluctuate from one extreme to another. 25. As a sword in the hand of a madman, even so is the soul to him who wanted discretion. The end of her search is truth. Her means to discover it are reason and experience. But are these, but are not these weak, uncertain, and fallacious? How then shall she attain unto it? So the soul is always searching for truth, and their means of the soul to attain it is reason and experience. I've said before that dealing with right knowledge, and we talked about with um, Buddhism. It's three means of attaining it. You want evidence, experience, evidence, and reason. Here it says that the soul search for truth, the means that the tools that are used are reason, reason, reasoning out and experience. But these are uncertain things. Your experience may not be a, a certified way of getting to truth. Right? Because of what your the, the situation of your experience. You may be around people who are not truthful but you're, that's your experience <laughs> who don't have your best interest at heart but that's your experience they may tell you truth mixed with falsehood right and then you can reason it out based on that experience but it's uncertain okay and that's why reflection within tap your listening to that still small voice is the best way of, of getting to truth Verse 27, general opinion is no proof of truth, for the generality of men are ignorant. So just because a majority of people, the masses will say something is a certain way, doesn't make it true. Verse In the last verse here, it says, perception of thyself, the knowledge of him who created thee, the sense of worship thou owest unto him, are not these plain before thy face and behold what is there more that men needed to know so it's talking about the perception of self studying self viewing self right and you say man know thyself okay which is which is the basic mantra of the circle seven know yourself and Allah know thyself and Allah right and then the question is asked in the third chapter of the circle 7 verse 14 if you would ask me what to study I would say yourselves and you well have studied them and then would ask me what to study next I would reply yourselves so it goes back to the study of self it's an inward journey and that is basically the entire, I just read the entire chapter 38, Soul of Man. Now, I said I was going to uh, revisit the first verse of the Soul of Man and where it reads, The blessing, O man, of thy external part is health, vigor, and proportion. The greatest of these is health. What health is to the body, even that is honesty to the soul. Now, in this context, I want to actually um, address a communication, something I, I received from one of my teachers, um, Sheikh Brother um, Dwight Corbett Bay, uh, who is the creator of Sato. Moorish American Sato, which stands for Sato, standing for Spiritual Art to Oneness, which is a holistic system that incorporates um, meditation, martial arts, and and other modalities. 
he told me something in reference to this um, this chapter and I'm just going to read parts of it what he what he said he said it's Islam Sheik the smallest element in a cup will contaminate anything going into it thus destroying purity please read Soul of Man mainly verses 1 9 14 25 26 27 28 be conscious of the importance of health which total health is three parts mental physical and spiritual 28 speaks of perception of thyself what is our perception of ourselves okay our perception knowledge of self is the key to understanding we must know our relationship the true connection and our responsibility to the creator and creation okay and then he goes on and asks the question is the she in soul of man the same as the she in chapter 20 in chapter 20 for those who don't know um, is dealing with um, holy instruction and warnings for all young men okay do you think thus she could be the life force will the description of she in the chapters fit will our energy and how we are to use energy fit that description and tell us how to work with energy is immovable about controlling the continuous free motion of energy life force not leaving consciousness of life force to satisfy the lower self not to engage in illusions and so that's very important that we deal with that so I want to address that um, closing out in reference to that because health to the body is as true to the soul um, in the 36th chapter of the circle 7 the very first verse it says weak and ignorant as thou art O man humble as thou art to be O child of the dust we talked about the dust before wouldst thou raise thy thoughts to infinite wisdom wouldst thou see omnipotence displayed before thee contemplate thy frame speaking of the body to contemplate the body okay that the frame in which the spirit and the soul are in so as we age we learn the greater value of health right even in this day and age with the um you hear about COVID-19, coronavirus, the pandemic, some would say the pandemic, right? We're now uh, understanding more about health. Health is important in order to perform at our highest potential. The healthier the body is, the stronger the mind is, as well as the spirit. And we know a weak and ill body will cause the mind and spirit to be weak. Think of when we had some sickness, did your mind work better or worse at that time? Just think about that. How many parts are in health? As mentioned before, there are three basic parts, physical, mental, and spiritual. The physical part is the body. The body can be broken down further. The body has organs, internal and external, joints and limbs, which all need to be healthy. The organs must be exercised, health, um, exercised regularly and massaged to be healthy. Mentally, we must learn to control and regulate the organs, limbs, muscles, tendons, ligaments, etc. Spiritual health is, as we mentioned before, the consciousness that man is ought, that man and Allah are one. And that's mentioned in Circle 7, Chapter 7, Verse 23. The consciousness that man is ought, that man and Allah are one. What is in the Moorish questionnaire? 
What is truth? Truth is art. What is art? Art is a law. Can truth change? Truth cannot change or pass away. And as we mentioned in The Soul of Man, that the search for the soul is the search for truth. End of the search is finding truth. To have understanding, to have comprehension, to use the knowledge and this life force, this divine force, we must be sensitive to the energies around us. As mentioned in chapter 7 of the Circle 7, verse 21. Okay, so the higher self deals with the breath, the holy breath. Again, we're going back, still relating to the soul of man. So that's breathing. Okay, so I just want to really give some insight to that. So... And then the honesty to the soul aspect is dealing with we have to be truthful to ourselves. Right? So, honesty to our true nature as divine beings. Okay? That's why I had that said you can't lose her in a crowd. You can't lose your soul in being amongst a whole bunch of people. Your soul will still exist. So, you might as well face the music, the proverbial music. And reflection is the business of man. Go within, study yourself, perception of yourself, and really tap into the divine, the omnipotent within. So you become one with the omnipotent. And that concludes this episode. I thank you all for listening. And until next time, peace and love.